As scientists, we're certain that climate change is occurring, but the challenge is now to understand by what degree the climate is changing and what effect that is going to have on the Earth around us. And we use a technique called remote sensing. Remote sensing allows us to take a measurement without being directly in contact with the thing that we want to measure. Every day that we open our eyes, we, we use remote sensing to understand whether we're looking at uh, a leaf or a, a tree. So we, we can look at differences of the colour of light because our eyes are fantastic at being able to measure in the visible radiation. That's looking at the reds, greens and blues. But our eyes aren't sensitive to all of the wavelengths of light around us. We're being bombarded by wavelengths outside of our uh, perception into the infrared. We can feel that in the sense of temperature. So you can put your hand close to a fire and you can feel the heat coming off. The temperature is coming from light and essentially just photons in a different wavelength. In the same way, we can look at light outside of our wavelengths into the ultraviolet. And in the ultraviolet, we can look at differences in the spectrum to give us more information about the world around us. So now we're in the clean room, and this is where we prepare all our satellites before we send them into space. The purpose of dressing up like this is to prevent any dust, any hair from shedding and going onto our delicate optics. And we need to make sure that when they're operating in space, they're operating to their maximum efficiency. Any dust, any particulates that could get onto the optics could potentially ruin the measurements of these very expensive satellites. So the purpose of this clean room is an optics laboratory. It's to be able to test the satellites, the optical capabilities of the satellites, before we send them into space. So what we do is we need to have a very dark room. We have all the walls painted black. We also need to be able to remove all the light completely from this area. We can now test our satellite instruments to various inputs, various types of light sources. In the pitch black, we can see that visible objects can't be seen. However, in the infrared, light behaves differently than it does in the visible. In the visible, everything around us is dark, but in the infrared, everything acts as a light source. And we can use this property of light to give us more information about the world around us. In this case, temperature. And we can use these same techniques from satellites to understand the world around us, to measure the temperature of the globe as the satellite flies overhead. And it's these measurements of sea surface temperature, of land surface temperature, that allows us to understand how climate change is affecting the world around us. So what you can see here are satellite images of Earth taking at different wavelengths. Now in the top left hand corner, what you see is what you'd expect to see from the satellite in the visible. So at 500 nanometers, we'd see clouds, the land surface, the red, greens and blues that you'd expect to see. Now if we move into the infrared, we're looking at infrared, infrared radiation starting to emit from the Earth's surface. So that's where you can start to see the Sahara. And then if we move even further into the uh, far infrared, we start to see specific temperatures. And that's where you see clouds as dark, cold, but looking down at the surface of the sea, for example, where there's no clouds here, we can actually see radiation from the Earth's surface itself. This is all in the infrared, and this gives us a lot of good information scientifically about our Earth but we can also use different wavelengths to take science information. For example, this is what we'd expect to see of the sun. However, if we move into the ultraviolet, we can actually start to see that the sun isn't a flat uniform disk, but there's a turmoil of, of, of hot gases that are moving up and down. You can actually see that this radiation is associated with light at 30.4 nanometers, well beyond what we can see with the human eye. But we can actually start to pick out features in this sun's atmosphere. And again, if we move even further into the ultraviolet, now we're at 17.1 nanometers, we're looking really deep into the atmosphere of the sun. So the importance of learning about the electromagnetic spectrum and how different lights and different wavelength regions react and interact with different things around us is critical to our understanding of not only what's happening at the sun, but what's happening on Earth. And this information allows us to understand what's happening to climate change.